Hello everyone, welcome to the Newton Demo Lab here at SpecAC. Today we're going to be looking at our family of ATR products. Uh, we have three of these products in our family. We have the Golden Gate, we have the Quest, and we have the Gateway. Each of them has many different options and configurations, too many to go through on one video, so we're just going to look at the main differences between them. Um, throughout this video we're going to assume that you know a little bit about ATR spectroscopy, but if you don't, we highly recommend our Basics of ATR FTIR series of technical notes which will be available in the link below this video. Uh, for now, all you need to remember is that ATR is a contact technique where a small evanescent wave penetrates a small depth into your sample where it contacts a reflecting crystal element. So the first major difference between these accessories is that the Golden Gate and the Quest are both single reflection ATR devices, whereas the Gateway is a six reflection ATR. What this means is that for these two accessories, each ray of light contacts the sample only once as it reflects off the internal reflection element, whereas for the Gateway, there are six points of contact for every ray of light. For a multiple reflection device like the Gateway, there are really two fold advantages. The first is that with multiple points of contact, we increase the sensitivity. Uh, we can describe this in terms of an increase in effective path length, but we should remember that more points of contact does not imply that the, the beam is penetrating to a greater depth. It's simply at more places in the sample. The second advantage is that the larger crystal area means that you can average out any spatial inhomogeneities in the sample. For the single reflection devices, like the Golden Gate and the Quest ATR, the main advantage is that it allows us to concentrate the light at a smaller point on the sample via a smaller and more robust crystal. This allows us to use smaller sample quantities and it's much easier for us to establish firm contact for powder and solid samples due to the higher pressure that we can obtain from the clamp mechanism. It also allows us the possibility of using diamond as our main ATR reflection element. Diamond is chemically resistant and also scratch resistant, making it perfect for ATR spectroscopy. This opens up a wider range of potentially aggressive chemicals and chemical processes that we can use on the ATR. We recommend our series of technical notes already mentioned on calculating the effective path length of an ATR measurement and how to choose an ATR material for more information on these subjects. We've hinted at it already, but the configuration of the ATR accessory does affect what samples it is best at analysing. All ATRs are highly effective at analysing homogeneous liquids and solutions. We simply need to ensure that we have enough sample to cover the entire ATR element. Solid samples, such as plastic pellets, fibres, gums, coated films and so on, are really best analysed using a single reflection ATR spec, uh, accessory. That is because we need these samples to make firm, repeatable contact with the ATR element. This is easier to ensure when we apply a concentrated force using the pressure tower and a suitable pressure angle. The Golden Gate is really our most highly developed accessory for these samples, with a range of anvils for containing all kinds of solid samples having been developed over the years. Its pressure tower can apply a load of 80 pounds consistently. The Quest ATR is still well equipped for the majority of common samples such as plastics, all types of powder, and can repeatedly apply a 40 pounds load thanks to its click device that indicates when a full load has been reached. Finally, the larger area of the Gateway Multiple Reflection ATR makes it best for analysing inhomogeneous liquids and pastes since the larger analysis area will tend to average out any spatial variations. The Quest ATR can analyse samples from room temperature up to 110 degrees Celsius when using a heated ATR puck such as shown here. This is controlled using dedicated software via a compact USB link. With the Quest, we also have the ability to use a low volume flow cell to analyse microliter quantities of liquids. For the gateway, in addition to the standard flat plates, we also have heated plates that can be heated either electrically or using a hot circulating fluid as the heated element. We also have flow cells through which the sample can be flowed um, and there's also a heated version of that too. Plates heated by a circulating fluid have a maximum temperature of 90 degrees Celsius, while the electrically heated plate can reach 200 degrees C. 
Finally, the Golden Gate has our most extensive list of advanced options of all. For this accessory, we have a supercritical fluid cell that can be used to study samples at supercritical conditions of temperature and pressure, with a maximum of 6,000 psi and 300 degrees Celsius being possible inside its 26 microliter cell. We also have the larger reaction cell attachment, which is able to analyze samples at up to 200 degrees C and 3,000 psi in a 24 milliliter chamber. And this can also be fitted with an optional motorized stirrer that fits on the top. We also have a cryo chamber option, which can be used to cool samples to near liquid nitrogen temperatures. And finally, we also have a high temperature top plate that can be used to heat samples from ambient temperature up to around 300 degrees Celsius. This has also recently been updated to use the same USB temperature controller as the Quest ATR. So, that's all for today. We do hope that you've enjoyed our run through of SpecAx ATR accessories. Do be sure to reach out to the team here if you've got any questions at all. Alternatively, visit our website at specat.com or follow us on LinkedIn for more information and updates. Thanks very much.